Introduction For some time now, we have been looking at giving the up-and-coming generation the attention that they deserve. Our aim is to make available to them the sort of things and literature that they identify with and like in different languages, amongst which is English. It is an undeniable fact that English has become the primary language of communication between our second generations living here in the West. Accordingly, the Alul Bait, A. S. Foundation for Reviving the Heritage, London, UK, has recognized the need for setting up a publishing house whose duty it is to translate the gems of our religious and cultural heritage to the main living languages. After discussing the idea with Hujatul Islam as Saeed Jawad Ash Sharistani, the establishment of Dar al Hadi in London, UK has become a reality. It is a known fact that many members of our younger generation aspire to become acquainted with and or study the different disciplines taught in the conventional centers of religious learning and scholarship. And yet, it has been difficult for them to materialize this aim because of the complexity of the subject matter. However, we have been lucky enough to come across a series of books intended to untangle these often highly complex fields and make them readily discernible by the layman. The author, Martyr Murtada Mutahari, who is among the luminaries of our school of thought, has been known for his original thought and vast contribution to the Islamic library. This series has been chosen to inaugurate a project that we hope will grow to satisfy a pressing need for familiarization with such complex material, which our younger generation have heard of but yet to understand its content and objectives. Introducing these generations to Islamic sciences in this style, which aims to unravel the vague and make meaningful the ambiguous, is our main goal. In the end, we pray to the Almighty to make this effort of ours beneficial to those who aspire to gain this type of knowledge, and bestow success on us to produce these booklets. Our aim and hopes are to gain happiness in this world and the hereafter. And Allah is the best friend and helper. Fadhil Barululam Dar Al Hadi Publications London, UK Thulhia, 1423 H. February 2003 Lesson 1 Scholastic theology The origins of Kalam It is not possible to determine with absolute certainty when the science of scholastic theology started. Yet, the middle of the second Hijri, Islamic lunar calendar, century witnessed the beginning of the controversy between Muslims over issues of a Kalam nature. Thus, questions of free will, predestination, and justice, were debated. Perhaps, the first official seminary was that of Al-Hassan al-Basri, d. 110 h. Two towering figures, who lived in the middle of the second century, come to mind. Especially when one talks about vehement defense of man's free will. They are Mabid al-Juni, d. 8669th, and Jilin ad Damashchi, of Damascus, d. 15767th. On the other side of the ideological divide, there were the proponents of the doctrine of predestination. The latter were known as Jabriites, as opposed to the former, Qadriites. The differences between these two schools of thought had crept into other issues relating to divinity, natural and social sciences, man and resurrection. 
The Qadriites were later known by the name Mutazilites, lit. The Separatists, founded by Wasil bin Adda, 130-748. The student of Al-Hasan al-Basri after he had turned his back to his teacher. And the Jabriites, from the Arabic root Jab, necessity, compulsion, Ashariites, i.e. Named after the founder of the school, Abul Hassan Ali bin Ismail al-Ashari, d. 324-935. The Orientalists and their disciples are adamant that the beginning of deductive work in the world of Islam started with that sort of debate. Nevertheless, the truth is that deductive research in Islamic fundamentals emanated from the Holy Quran. The prophetic traditions and the sermons of Imam Ali, a. s. used to provide the commentary on those Quranic passages. It has to be noted, though, that that scholarship varied in style and substance. Pursuant to the caliber of Muslim speculative theologians, Mutakalimin. Research or following. The Holy Quran has secured the pillars of belief according to reasoning. It has always aimed to make people reach conviction by way of intellection or rational judgment. The holy book does not consider worship in matters of belief sufficient. Therefore, fundamentals of religion have to be examined through logic. Questions such as the existence of God and his unity should be resolved by way of rational judgment. So is the prophethood of Muhammad, S. A. W. This is how the science of the fundamentals of religion emerged during the first century of the Islamic era. The embracing of Islam by non-Arabs, the existence of different ideologies and principles, and the coexistence of Muslims with the followers of other religions, such as Jews, Christians, Magians, and Sabians, had precipitated debate between Muslims. Those developments and the interaction between all those peoples were instrumental in the appearance of groups, such as atheists, thanks to the general climate of freedom. Especially at the time of the Abbasid Caliphate. The latter did not mind the proliferation of such trends provided that holding such views did not constitute any divergence from the ruling establishment's general guidelines. Philosophy, which called for free thinking and the casting of doubt and false arguments, also came to the fore. All those developments called for scrutiny in the fundamental structures of Islam. With a view of consolidating them, Hence the emergence of great speculative theologians, Mutakalimin, in the 2nd, 3rd and 4th centuries of the Islamic era. The early issues perhaps, among the early issues, which became the bone of contention between Muslims, was the question of predestination and free will. This was quite natural not least because it has a bearing on man's destiny, hence, the importance attached to it by any sensible person. There might not be a single intellectually mature society whose members do not engage in debate on these matters. Moreover, since the Holy Quran discussed these issues in many verses, it has become the driving force behind the dialogue on such questions between people. Therefore, we should not go far in order to find a justification for the appearance of this issue in the world of Islam. As for the Orientalists, they always seek to refute the originality of Islamic sciences and thought, in any way possible, above all, 
by tracing such knowledge and scholarship to domains outside the realm of Islam, especially Christianity. That is why, they try to attribute the science of Kalam, speculative theology, to some other ideology, i.e. not Islamic. After all, this is what they tried to do with even purely Arabic sciences, such as grammar, metrics, rhetoric, figures of speech, and Islamic Gnosis, or mysticism, or fun. The research in predestination and free will also deals with the question of decree and destiny, kata and qadr. Insofar as its relationship with the human beings is concerned, it is called predestination and free will, jab and ikhtiar. And as far as its link with God is concerned, it is called decree and destiny. The research has been extended to cover the issue of divine justice, ADL, for the obvious correlation between predestination and injustice, on the one hand, and free will and justice, on the other. Justice, however, led to the study of the inbuilt good and repugnance, Husson and Cube, of the human actions. This in turn led to the study of reason, AQL, and intellectual independence. As a result of discussing all these topics, yet another subject came to the fore, viz. Wisdom, Hikmah, i.e. the wise intents and purposes of the divine. The research had gradually developed to cover other topics, such as the unity of actions, Tahid Afali, and the unity of attributes, Tahid Sifati. This will be discussed later on. These scholastic theology issues and research had branched out into a plethora of subjects that have a philosophical dimension, such as the studies in the essence and manifestations of things and the composition of the body from inseparable parts. Scholastic theologians have considered carrying out those studies as necessary i.e. preparing the ground for the discussions of the issues dealing with the fundamentals of religion, especially creation and resurrection, Mabda, and Ma'ad. Thus, a number of issues, which used to be the exclusive domain of philosophy, had become part and parcel of the science of scholastic theology. Hence the spanning of topics between philosophy and Kalam, speculative theology. Reading speculative theology books, especially those written in the 7th century of the Islamic era onward. You will discover that most Kalam issues were the ones discussed by philosophers, Muslims in particular. Philosophy and Kalam had great impact on each other. One such influence was that Kalam had introduced new subjects into philosophy. For its part, philosophy had widened the horizons of Kalam. In that discussing philosophical questions within a speculative theology setting had become necessary. Hopefully, we shall be able to expand on this subject by giving examples later on. Rational and traditional debate Despite the fact that the science of Kalam is a deductive and analogous one, in the premises and principles it espouses to reaching logical conclusions. It consists of two parts, i.e. rational, aqli, and traditional, nikli. Reason comprises the questions that are the exclusive preserve of reason, or intellect. Nevertheless, if tradition is resorted to in the process, it can be considered as an extra piece of evidence on the rational judgment. Issues of debate of this sort include monotheism, prophethood, 
and some topics relating to resurrection, where you cannot rely exclusively on tradition, i.e. the Holy Quran and prophetic tradition, Sunnah. You have to count on reason. Tradition is concerned with issues pertaining to the fundamentals of religion that one must believe and have faith in. However, since it is a branch of prophethood, and not above it, it is sufficient to prove the issues by way of divine revelation or authentic prophetic hadith, tradition, such as those questions relating to imamate, according to Shiite doctrine. Imamate is among the fundamentals of religion. The same goes for the majority of the topics that are relevant to the question of resurrection.